Hello, and welcome to my session on the Flip Classroom. And this video is going to give you a little taste of uh, what, uh, how a Flip Classroom uh, works, and it also give you a little idea of what this all is. So let's go ahead and ask the big question. What is the Flip Classroom? Well, basically, it's another way of doing your school and turning it upside down. What you'll be doing, your primary instruction is now done in the home, uh, which would be your lectures or any uh, videos or anything that you would want them to see. And then at school, your homework, projects, or anything else you normally had assigned for homework now is done in the classroom under the guidance of a teacher. What are the benefits of this arrangement? Well, first off, it does help students take more responsibility for their learning, which is always a good thing. But also, content that you're given can be archived and reviewed for remediation. Of course, uh, for test reviews, pass reviews, or uh, EOCs, that kind of thing, is very helpful. But also, those students who are absent, uh, maybe go on homebound, they can still get the benefit of your instruction um, through this method. What this also does is it allows you increased interaction and a more personalized education for the student, which of course is always a good thing. When you're doing lectures uh, in the classroom or watching videos and stuff, basically everybody's focused to one thing and therefore the teachers and the students really don't get to interact as much as the, you would hope they would. Now the teacher becomes more of a facilitator. And in the past, it used to be the teacher was that sta sage on the stage. But now, with the way things are changing, the teacher really needs to become more of a facilitator to be there to help guide the students on their journey through their educational process. The flipped classroom helps this happen. What are drawbacks? Well, there are some. First off, Yes, you're going to have to more or plan more classroom activities, and you will have to take the time to create videos or locate them and distribute them to your students. But with some practice and once you get a set of videos done, you really won't have to do that much more. Also, and this is a question I get asked a lot, and I'm sure a lot of, we're going to discuss this uh, later on, but not all students can see the videos at home. We'll talk more about how this can be uh, avoided or we can accommodate for this situation. The content and idea exploration creation is definitely a good thing, okay? And this is good common core stuff. Effective differentiation of instructional strategies. Here's another great buzzword for those of you playing buzzword bingo. But uh, yes, the differentiation, you may have some higher level students and lower level students. This is a case uh, that I had, all in the same classroom. But to sit there and do a lecture, you may only really be targeting or actually effectively getting to a very small percentage. In this case, you actually can have some students who can move on ahead uh, and do well, but you can also be able to go target those kids who are going to need the extra help. Through this process, they get the instruction at home, and those that can go on and do their independent work, they can. The others can also uh, be helped, okay? And this will give you an idea of who really needs your more one-on-one -on -one, uh, help. Okay, more opportunities for student collaboration. This is another um, term for the great buzzword bingo, but it does allow for interaction. And one of the things that I've seen when I've done this is students do actually work and help each other uh, when I'm kind of busy with another student. Quick questions and a little bit of help. The students can actually work with each other on this, and it's been a really good thing. So what is the classroom or the flipped classroom not? Well, for first off, for those of you who are worried about your jobs, it's not about replacing teachers. In fact, the teacher is still a very important part of this whole process. In actuality, it's even more important because the teacher has to do um, all this work. They actually help 
with work with students who truly need help, while other students who don't necessarily need as much help, they can move on. It's not online videos or online courses. That's a totally different animal. And students working without structure or in isolation. You don't want that, and that's not what this is designed for. We, even though you may have some students who can do well in this situation, it's really not designed for them either. Students who are staring at computer screens all class period, definitely not. Okay? In fact, this is really a bad way of doing education. No, you want different activities and students up interacting and doing various different uh, projects uh, and assignments. So, here's some of my personal observations of this uh, flipped classroom as I've done it. First off, believe it or not, it's not for all students, or at least not yet. Most of the students are still more comfortable with the traditional method of uh, instructional delivery. Some have burned up to it more than others. Usually I found out my neediest students are the ones that had the hardest time with it. First off, students do need to get used to the idea because they're just not used to this type of instruction. But once they get it, uh, those who do well, and they take off really uh, quickly. The other thing is I found out some students will have to actually be taught how to watch a video. This means taking the video piece by piece and stopping rewinding to get certain parts. Most students will try to watch it all at once just as if you were doing your actual lecture and then not bother to go back and review. They need to really know that they can and that's the beauty of a flipped classroom situation. They can review and rewind a video over and over again. I always tell my students that the Mr. Woodring online or in the video doesn't get tired or cranky when you ask the same question over and over again. It does allow for more collaborative learning. I did notice that amongst my students. They did work together helping each other out, which again was a very good thing. And I did notice I had more one-on-one -on -one time with students, except in a class where I really had just about everyone was truly a needy uh, student that had a hard time. Students have more time to work on projects, um, which in the, in the classroom, it's really great. A lot of times this is where you have your uh, materials, your equipment and all, and it's usually not that well done at home. And I have noticed overall less discipline problems. Again, sometimes the more needy students, they're the ones who want to go try to do other things. Also, the ones who want to try to take advantage of the situation, they found out pretty quick. They got behind in a big hurry, and then they scrambled to catch up, and they usually didn't uh, fall behind again. So what are some tools that you're going to need? Well, here's some things to get started. First off, you'll need screencasting tools. Uh, Screencast-O-Matic or Active Inspire actually has some great things for you to do this, depending on your situation. For those of you who are math, you may want to use the Active Inspire and use a uh, Promethean board if you have one or a smart board uh, with those tools. Most everybody else, Screencast-O-Matic should work very well. Another thing you can also do is create PowerPoint and then record audio that will go along with that and combine it into, say, Live Movie Maker. does a great job there, too. You might also want a camcorder or a webcam. That's if you really think your looks are good on video. If you notice, I'm not on here, and that's for a good reason. All right, so how do you distribute your videos? Well, there's a variety of ways. Some more uh, popular ones include YouTube, SchoolTube, or something like that, or TeacherTube. But I like to use Emoto or a learning social network uh, such as that because I can actually put the video directly there the students log in and can watch it online without having any uh, issues about sites being blocked, as you might have with, say, YouTube. There are also sites that have already created some lessons for you. I'm sure you've seen some of these. Of course, there's good old YouTube and, of course, SchoolTube as well. But some of you may have heard of the Khan Academy, which has lots of math and science lessons predominantly, but they're branching out into other subjects as well. 
But there's also iTunes U. A lot of people don't really think of that, but there's some really great stuff there that you can find and incorporate into your classes. And, of course, the thing brand new is called TED-Ed, which is a really great um, new resource for educations from TED Talks that um, you can go use. And they actually have lots of resources for you to use as far as questions and things like that. And you can also take and edit the videos to suit your own purposes if you want to. A really great feature there. All of these are free. Um, so that's always a good thing. So that's it right now. We'll probably have a more in-depth discussion uh, about this. And we'll probably try some practice stuff. But if you want more information, I've got some sites and other resources on my website. It's at johnwoodring.com flipped. Thank you for watching.